Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemy, and we're here, Graham Coxon and Rose Dougal of The Wave. Hi. Hello. How are you doing, guys? Not too shabby. Yeah? Yeah, all right. Thank you very much for having us around. It's a lovely, lovely part of town. Lovely day for it. Um, and today, we announce your self-titled debut album. Great. Yeah. Cool. How does it feel? <laughs> Pretty <laughs> great. It, to have the world knowing. Yeah, it's really, <laughs> yeah, look great. So I guess we've sort of been sat on it for a little while. Um, I mean, we've been working on this project for, what, a year and a half, if not longer. Yeah. Which isn't actually that long in the kind of in the scheme of making records, but it feels like quite, it's been a long, I don't know, a lot has happened in that time. And I think, um, yeah, it's just brilliant to say that we have a whole full length thing. So we've been sort of putting little signals out for the last few months and did a few shows in May. But yeah, we've got a whole body of work to show the world. Mm. Are we calling it a super group? Or is that too lame? What do you think? <laughs> Don't you need more than two people for a super group? Super duo. <laughs> super duo. Is it super? Yeah, yeah, I mean... It's, uh, it's I'm, a very really strong I'm, line. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think those those kind of bands are, are put together uh, um, in a different sort of situation. I think how we came together was kind of different, so... Yeah. I don't know whether it, it can be termed a super group or super duo. But um, what can you tell us about when your paths first crossed? We actually met... Um, Graham came to a Pipette's gig in 2004, um, which was one of our really early shows at the, Buff the Buffalo Bar in Islington. Sadly, no longer exists. And, I, yeah, I think I spoke to you briefly after the show and sort of shouted at you to buy me a drink or something. Yeah, yeah, I think I was summoned, wasn't I? I, I think I asked for something, a really disgustingly strong drink. Yeah. I was drinking a lot of brandy at the time. I don't know what was up with me. <laughs> so I got you a quadruple brandy and, <laughs> and, uh, and oh. said, uh, enjoy your night and, uh, just, and ran away. <laughs> um, so that was that. And then I think I, we did another sh show together, like a Queens of Noise show maybe a year or so later. Oh, God, yeah. Like another dimension, all this stuff. Indies but, these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then no, we didn't meet again until um, a, fr a mutual friend of ours put a show on it at the end of 2020, just in that sort of little window where you could do kind of rem um, distance shows mm. before the second lockdown, um, in aid of um, Lebanon after the explosion in Beirut. Um, and you were on the bill, and then I kind of was like, yeah, I'll play a couple of songs. And um, after the gig, uh, we had a bit of a chat, and... Um, we had a little bit of a chat, sort of sound check, like everyone does when they're milling about... And feeling awkward. Among, <laughs> among, among instruments and, and boxes and things like that. We had a bit of a, a, a chat, and then, you know, as usual, we all had a sort of... a dodgy burger and chips in the dressing room with all, all, all the bands in one room. <laughs> yeah, we just felt a bit... And like, then later on, we had a bit of a chat in the... Um, the smoking area. The overgrown <laughs> smoking area at the back of the jazz cafe and and um, sort of made some sort of suggestion or... I think I was like, oh, we should write a song. Ha -ha, yeah. Or something <laughs> like that. Because um, I was thinking about starting to work on um, my fourth rec solo record. Mm. Um, I would sort of had a few little ideas flying around. Um, but then we sort of emailed each other over the course of that Christmas and were sending bits of music that we liked and just chatting generally about what... I don't know, it wasn't even like, let's make a band. It was just sort of maybe if we were to work, what would be the thing, the points of interest that we had in common? I mean, obviously, mm. there's, there's quite a lot of common ground in our um, musical influences and tastes. I mean, like Graham was playing some um, Bert Jansch and John Martin covers at the show that we did, mm. which is a real kind of foundation of the music that I've always loved. So there was immediate, like, well, we, that's in the bag kind yeah. of thing. Um, but then we started to talk about all these other kind of weird things like Van der Graaff Generator and, I don't know, other odd bits of... Well, you have an extremely, she has an extremely wide and varied tastes in music. And, and I think I, I do as well um but there were gaps in 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 her ed musical education oh, really? <laughs> and mine and they were that was probably they were probably good gaps for her but i i, I <laughs> as a huge I, van der Graaff generator hole in my gap. education which there was a big really van der Graaff and maybe a king crimson gap and maybe a couple of other like jazzy gaps <laughs> and then there was some other gaps in mine um 
So yeah, very um, that that were now, are now filled with extremely tasteful music. <laughs> so uh, it, it was an interesting kind of educational sort of um, time. Yeah, o- over Christmas and 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 you know I I I hadn't had the best of years. Nor had I. And so we just thought, well, it, it we we kind of came up with a, this sort of an idea about how we um, forge forward through life. Do we actually? you know write some music do something completely different out of our comfort zone as they say or or just give the whole bloody thing up mm. and then forget about it you know, generally <laughs> live think, music and, yeah. and all the rest of it i think there was a definite like quite a pervasive it's a really tough time like for everyone anyway that i mean it still is difficult but that particular kind of coming out the end of that lockdown and everything um and just making music can be quite a painful process in itself i don't know so it felt it was a really fortuitous kind of kick up the arse for both of us in yeah. a way to say, well, hang on, maybe we could both step outside of our own individual sort of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, as soon as you get some a, a new energy into something, it, there's all these other things suddenly can reveal themselves, which was a bit of a gamble because you never know. I mean, obviously, I've always would, it was, you know, dream to get to work with Graham. I've always like, been a lifelong fan of what he's done. Um, but you, you know, even on paper, it can look perfect, but you don't really know how it's going to work out until you get in the room. Yeah. So it was quite a scary prospect, I think, for both of us. Sort of, just sort of rocked up to his little studio. It's like, oh, should we write a song then? <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. But surprisingly, it was actually a lot more of a, f- a lot more fluid than either of us ex- anticipated. Yeah. Um, and then within two weeks, we suddenly had, you know, the beginnings of four or five songs, and it became quite clear that actually this isn't just maybe a song that I might keep for myself or just a kind of standalone thing. There was a quite a sort of rich well of work sort of becoming yeah. evident. So maybe we should actually turn this into a project of its, in yeah. its own right. I hadn't really done anything. I hadn't really done any writing for the for 2020. So it, would, it, was, it, would, it was like a, a capped well. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that there was a lot a lot there it just needed the i suppose the right circumstances and um it was it was it was an odd an odd time because there there was no body really on the streets it was it was like you know time time and it uh, it's really slowed down it was just interesting to sort of try and make sense of ourselves in that situation and after our experiences and um it's quite sort of conducive. take some risks, really, in, in what we wanted to express about ourselves, the situation, each other, the situation, you know. It was sort of um, a really interesting kind of... Um, it kind of provided situation. a foil to maybe sort of get into territories that maybe neither of us might have the guts to, to yeah. as individuals. So, it, yeah, spurred on a kind of slightly... I know, just simple <laughs> things like um, I'm using my voice in a different way to what I would have done, probably just left to my own devices, or... Like Graham is playing a lot of sax, which, he, which I kind of pushed him into doing more. I don't know. And the way you're mm. playing guitar, there's just certain things that I think we both sort of spurred each other on. Previously, in a press release, no doubt, um, <laughs> that um, this kept, this record came across a shared love of English folk music, storytelling, and the associated landscapes of this beleaguered <laughs> island. So, how much would you say that this record kind of speaks to everything that was surrounding us at that time and how much did it speak to what you were going through or is it like a mishmash of I think it's a combination of the two but um I would say it's definitely we were thinking about like there's a very strong sort of Englishness about um I think both of our references and whatever Englishness means and I think there's in that we've I've been thinking a lot about what does it mean to be English it's a really complicated, uncomfortable relationship I have with that, you know, increasingly, actually, day by day, it feels like. But, you know, once if you step outside of, I mean, not that you can divorce things from politics and society, but there are certain, like, histories in kind of culture, music, musical culture and stories and landscape and those parts of what forms um, kind of cultural identity that can actually be really uh, um, inspire in a really great way and and sort of those are things to hold on to that maybe when everything else feels really at odds with each other and you kind of feel disassociated from your own place mm. 
<laughs> there was a lot of disassociation, really. It's a bit. It's a sort of a bit like we, we we were sort of given the opportunity together, I suppose, to make something, but go a little bit behind behind the veil of what I suppose we the experience of, of being English or or whatever this this landscape and this this country, and 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 go back to to a little bit more of a superstitious, more interesting, more rich kind of. Um, this is, is it land really you know, it's like it's a like bit at, I, mean, I suppose you know I, I i always loved the idea of when you get a hagstone and and you look through it you're meant to see the world in a different way you're you're actually meant to be seeing the the the, the, the world of of the, of the fairies and the elves and things like that so it's, i mean it's definitely been a long-term interest of mine the landscape and what it means and the objects that you can come across and the trees that you come across and what they might symbolize to you in the land and and sort of the elementals of of, of of the fire and the air and the earth and the water yeah. and all of that sort of and thing. The so stuff. we both yeah. seem to have an interest in. And the kind of blood and guts that. and sex and at like sort of uh, nastiness of a lot of folk music. It's not, it's not, this isn't like a, tw- I'm not interested in the twee kind of like, yeah, per- <laughs> like everything's just sort of oh, you're dealing with, lovely. You're dealing with sort, sort of, of treacherous. Like life and death and all that kind of thing. Sort of fairly <laughs> treacherous. <laughs> creatures so those are those are kind of some of the dry there's a brutality to like nature and the cruelty of nature and the, mm. uh, and the brutality of the city it's not all just pastoral it's there's those are the kind of like visual things that um i feel that the, our music summons up whether that carries over to the listener i don't know but yeah. those are the kind of cornerstones of what we were thinking about well i feel like there's old ideas and the kind of the folk influences but then there's also like a kind of Bowie-esque futurism, space age vibe mm. to this record mm. as well. So, it's like, how would you describe the kind of what you call the, the the character of the unexpected sonic universe that you landed on? The sounds of it, we we were just sort of. Um, I am really p- p- particular about needing stuff to keep my interest and changing in sounds and dynamics and things like that. And as we went along, it became you sort of got like of, a palette. So yeah. yeah. So so saxophone was introduced. There was a there was a, there was a piano. There was maybe sort of synthesizers, but in the the way in which things could be recorded in quite a stark way, we were experimenting with. So maybe that's might why might might, might might there be a sort of a futuristic flavor or a bit of a, a a sort of King Crimson or Bowie sort of flavor might might come into it. And definitely just finding I I think um, our our sonic identity maybe and it's a very loose one it's very liquid yeah. i mean it's not it's not um anything that is nailed down so um with what was just lying around was just lying around and, yeah uh, because there is a slightly proggy sort of attitude some just in the way that we some of the songs are quite long and there's kind of all these different sections and so you don't want to get into like really bloated overblown territory yeah. basically it got to a point where graham and i had you know Got, had this really well developed body of work, and it, but it just to kind of get an extra bit of perspective, we took all the songs to James Ford and um, spent a couple of weeks with him just adding an extra. He just sort of added an extra. We rec- well, we needed somewhere to record some drums. Well, we've run out of, out of instruments to play. <laughs> we, need, we needed a few more <laughs> and, bits to mess around with, put some real drums on. And yeah, and look. he had this amazing wall of analog synths, which you know. Yeah. It's just a dream. So that added a whole different sort of um, physicality to the recording. He's just got a really sensitive ear. Um, so he, you know, because there's a danger that someone, a third party might come in and start sort of pulling everything apart and need to put their own identity mm. on it. But... I think he sort of understood the mischief as well behind that. I, I, I like working with people who are mischievous, mischievous uh, in a sort of sonic way, a slightly yeah. perverse, yeah. like like sounds that, are, that, you know, that, that aren't afraid to... To um, it's like we should put, let's you know, put a bit maybe of flute make, make a something. sound that's kind of oh man is that a bit much you know other people <laughs> won't um, I, I I like to be entertained by by music as uh, as well so I think James really he's really, really fitted in in that way and really spontaneous in that way too so, oh let's put this yeah. vibraphone on it quickly yeah. or, you know so that just added oh sorry I keep Let's get this contrabass flute out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I was, I was going to say it is. Um, a very mischievous record, but it is also very tasteful. I was going to ask, how much did you? <laughs> were there ever, ever any moments where you're like we've we've gone too far, or are you guys just naturally quite tasteful? Oh, of course, we're naturally tasteful. <laughs> we're um, quite na- naturally. There were, I tasteful. think there might have been one or two moments. Your music tastes is ridiculously tasteful. Well, but I do like. <laughs> I I sometimes like music to, to 
to require effort. <laughs> I, what, I to, as from like, the listener, yeah, yeah, I make like, them work. I like to have a bit, of, you know, work a bit, and and sometimes I can go too far with. I think there were you know, a couple with, of with, moments with the sonic sonicness reflecting what what the, the you know the emotions or whatever or the lyrics and and it getting a bit uncomfortable. But um, <laughs> I think maybe the only thing is just not letting. I think my thing was not wanting to overstay our welcome with. Sometimes the, the songs kind of just have this lovely sprawling thing and. You know, when you listen to music and, you're th- and you, you know that the people making the music are having a really great time, mm. but where, does the listener actually have a part in that kind of... So I just was thinking a bit about not wanting to... Just making sure that everything that was there was, not, was there for a purpose and not just letting everything become too sort of, yeah, overdone. But I don't think... I don't know. I think we sort of so the never... electric wind instrument didn't last long. <laughs> no, the e wee, the e wee, the e wee. It's, it's on there. You've got to spot it. It's like one of those ma- those mice in that famous bloke's paintings. What, what could you tell us about um, the live shows you've played and how you translated this mad sound yeah. onto the stage? I definitely was quite worried about how that was going to work before we started yeah. rehearsing. I was like, oh god, really made a rod for our impact, but happily. We got a really brilliant group of musicians playing with us who made it much easier. <laughs> so I was the one that was like, I don't actually know how to play these fucking songs. <laughs> but they, um, yeah, it's we've got drums and bass and sax and violin, um, and you're playing a lot of guitar and guitar, and sax, sax and, and harmonica. <laughs> you kind of got. But we've all we're all doing quite a lot. I mean, it's quite involved. Mean, yeah, you can't like. You've got to keep your eye on the prize when we play. I don't know, can't sort of relax. A bit. But um, yeah, I don't know. The shows we did in May, we did a couple of shows at Lexington, which were great. And um, I guess it was quite a weird thing because no one had heard any of it and no one really knew anything about what we were doing. So that's a kind of a great position to, in a way to play a load of music because no one has any un- really, the expectations are so open, but it's also quite daunting because you just, People, you know, people's reactions are very obvious if there's a kind of silence afterwards. But it felt that there was, there, <laughs> I don't know, I felt felt that actually it was went down. People re- really responded to it, and it has got a yes. lot of energy. And well, we really care about the music, and and we we care about what we're doing, and we care about how it's presented to people. Um, we want we want we don't want to just be half-assed about it. We want the gigs to be kind of to have all the power of what we think the album has and and um we really thought we we put it across we thought we'd done yeah. it nice <laughs> <laughs> so more of it yeah so. you did a bit your backwards roll in your guitar solo at great escape was a strong moment there's a bit of that there's a bit oh. of theatrics oh, going I was say, we got some can we expect like rick wakeman cakes and stone oh. Oh, yeah i'd like to <laughs> but that was yeah i fought up the backwards roll with with the band um <laughs> over what it was had dinner. Yeah. yeah. And then I And then I just thought, oh man, I might have to do that. You did. But that's yeah. it now. I've got to retiring the Oh right, role. okay. I thought that was gonna be a front wood roll. Oh wow. Right. <laughs> or trampet. A okay. full somersault. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's what we've got a load of shows coming up next year. Beyond the wave, what can you tell us about what you guys have uh, got coming up in the calendar? Beyond, Beyond the wave. wave. Yeah. Oh, I like wow. that. I like that. That's album too. Um, I don't know. <laughs> nothing, there's nothing. There's nothing else. There's nothing beyond the wave. That's all there is. Beyond the wave. What, this year or in forever general. into yeah, the future? What is, what's the rest of 2022, 2023 look like? Well, we've just got more music coming out. Yeah. Um, so there should be a few more singles. Um, and then the album's out in February. Yeah. Next year. And then some touring and hopefully some <laughs> festivals. And yeah, just sort of putting it out there, really. And then you've got some other things happening, probably. But a book, yeah. right? Book on the way. Yeah, a book, book coming out of memoirs from a kind of a certain. It's not really a memoir, but it comes from a certain sort of angle about art, etc. From my own kind of strange um, view of the world throughout my life. So that's an interesting or not interesting read, <laughs> <laughs> depending on whether you like that sort of thing. Um, with some funny, funny drawings and visuals in there. So yeah, I'll be talking to a few people around around Britain <laughs> about that, doing some book launches and some questions and answerings with um, Matt, Matt Everett. And um, apart from that, I mean, I like having not an awful lot of plans. 
Hmm. Well, there were rumours in an unnamed tabloid of a, of a blur reunion. Is that uh, should we... a blur re- reunion? Any stock in that, or are you leaving life more spontaneously than making big plans? I don't think anything is is. Um, I haven't even talked to anyone about that. I don't know what that what that's about. I haven't talked to any of those boys for a while. Mm. Although I did text Alex the other day. Yeah. But he was involved in his big um, festival. Oh, festival. Yeah. He was feasting. <laughs> 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 Um, so he didn't really get back to me. And Rose, any more solo plans? Um, not right now. I think this feels like... So that's a really greedy question. Give us more! <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think... Yeah, enough's enough. What was it? Um, no, I think this is sort of my focus for the time being. Mm. So we'll see. But yeah, maybe... I'm, I'm not... Whatever, who knows? Yeah. But I think definitely the waivers are kind of... Than my main focus for now. I recently asked Guano about a potential pipettes reunion. Oh, right, she, yeah. polite, she politely declared, she said it's had a wonderful place in history. But, uh... <laughs> wonderful place, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I would say the same. <laughs> Rose and Graham, thank, thank you so you. much for your time. Thank Cheers, you. thanks.